Dustin Poirier is gearing up for a significant challenge as he prepares to face Islam Makachev for the UFC lightweight title at UFC 302. Despite being considered an underdog by many, Poirier is confident in his abilities and believes Makachev may be underestimating him. Poirier's opportunity to challenge Makachev came somewhat unexpectedly, but he wasted no time in accepting the fight, recognizing it as potentially his last shot at the title. While Makachev has been dominant in his performances, Poirier is determined to prove himself and capitalize on this opportunity. Despite Makachev's recent confidence and statements suggesting an easy victory against Poirier, the Lafayette native is unfazed. He's heard the talk and believes Makachev may be overlooking his skills, particularly in jiu-jitsu. Poirier is prepared to show Makachev what he's capable of inside the octagon and is focused on securing the win. He said this. My daughter is going to be there front row for the first time ever. I want to show her that you can accomplish your dreams. This is a big deal to me. It's more than fighting. Like I said before, what I'm fighting for is worth more than silver and gold. It's my life to have this feather in my cap, if it is the last one, to walk away from this sport content. I just want to go through life content. And winning isn't guaranteed. Of course. I'm fighting the number one pound for pound guy, but I'm putting myself in position physically, mentally, to be in the best position I can be and make this a reality. It is what it is. Dream chasing. Story of my life. For Poirier, this fight represents more than just another bout. It's a chance to fulfill his dreams and set an example for his daughter. At 35 years old, Poirier understands the significance of this moment and is determined to make the most of it, regardless of the odds stacked against him. With his eyes set on victory, Poirier is ready to give his all and leave everything in the octagon. Win or lose, he aims to walk away from the sport with contentment, knowing he gave his best effort in pursuit of his dreams. Michel Pereira, known for his crazy and high-risk fighting style, recently addressed the controversy surrounding his win over Potieria at UFC 301. Despite criticism for his backflip during the fight, which some deemed potentially illegal, Pereira remains unapologetic about his approach. In a recent interview, Pereira defended his style, emphasizing that taking risks is integral to his identity as a fighter. He views himself as a risk-taker, which he believes contributes to his impressive performances and status as the showman. He said this. It's my fighting style. It's what I do. That's the risk. But I'm the risk taker. That's why I'm getting the performances I've been getting. That's why I'm the UFC showman. I'm always on the edge of the risks. While Pereira has shown some restraint in certain fights, his eccentric personality and entertaining style continue to captivate fans. Many are eager to see him face a top-ranked opponent to truly test his abilities, especially considering his eight-fight winning streak. As fans speculate about Pereira's future in the octagon, there's anticipation about who his next opponent will be and whether he'll eventually vie for a UFC world title. Despite the controversy surrounding his recent win, Pereira's unapologetic attitude and exciting fighting style ensure that he remains a compelling figure in the sport. It's always amusing to see UFC fighters step out of their comfort zone and into the world of entertainment, whether it's through singing competitions like The Masked Singer or other ventures. Dreykus Duplessis, known for his prowess in the octagon, surprised fans by revealing his identity as Wildebeest on The Masked Singer South Africa. It seems like Duplessis' appearance on the show was met with excitement and entertainment, showcasing his vocal talents in a different arena. And while his performance might have been unexpected, it's clear that he captivated the audience with his vocals, even if it meant momentarily trading his fighting gear for a costume. With Duplessis gearing up for his first middleweight title defense against former champion Israel Adesanya at UFC 305, it's refreshing to see him embrace light-hearted opportunities like the masked singer. 
It adds another layer to his persona outside of the cage and highlights his versatility as an athlete and entertainer. It seems Conor McGregor has had to make some significant adjustments to his training regimen as he prepares for his highly anticipated return to the octagon at UFC 303. Following a scary incident last year where he was hit by a car while cycling in Dublin, McGregor has decided to forego biking as part of his training routine. The incident occurred in January of last year while McGregor was cycling to prepare for his comeback fight against Michael Chandler, which had just been confirmed at the time. Despite escaping with only minor injuries, McGregor shared a video on social media showing the aftermath of the collision and the driver bringing him home safely. Since then, McGregor hasn't been back on his bike, as he recently reflected on the incident in an Instagram story, expressing that he hasn't ridden his bike since the crash. The video from the incident shows McGregor interacting with the driver, assuring him that everything is alright despite the scare. Given the severity of the incident and McGregor's acknowledgement of how fortunate he was to escape with minor injuries, it's understandable that he would choose to avoid biking as part of his training moving forward. Instead, McGregor is likely focusing on other aspects of his training to prepare for his upcoming fight against Michael Chandler at UFC 303. It seems that Tom Aspinall is not too concerned with John Jones' recent comments and is rather focused on the practicalities of getting Jones to sign a contract to fight him. Aspinall expressed his indifference towards Jones' remarks, suggesting that until Jones commits to a fight with him by signing a contract, he won't pay much attention to what Jones says. Aspinall also voiced skepticism about the likelihood of Jones ever agreeing to fight him indicating that Jones may be playing games by publicly discussing potential matchups without committing to them. Until there is a concrete agreement in place, Aspinall seems reluctant to engage in discussions about fighting Jones. Tom said this. Yeah. It has nothing to do with me, mate. If we can get old John to ever sign a contract with my name on the other side of the contract, I'll talk about him for hours on this show. Hours. But right now, the guy is playing games again. Trying to convince the public of what he wants, and what he doesn't want, which he does really well. Regarding the potential matchup between Jones and Alex Pereira, Aspinall didn't delve into specifics but hinted at Jones' preference for that fight. However, Aspinall's focus remains on securing a fight with Jones himself, and until that happens, any speculation about other opponents is secondary. Ultimately, Aspinall's comments suggest that he is more interested in actions than words when it comes to potential matchups with John Jones, and he remains uncertain about the likelihood of facing Jones in the octagon. Jose Aldo's potential shot at the UFC bantamweight title doesn't seem to be favored by oddsmakers. In fact, he's opened as a considerable underdog against current champion Sean O'Malley, according to odds released by Bet Online. Aldo, despite his impressive return victory over Jonathan Martinez at UFC 301, is listed as a plus 210 underdog, indicating that a $100 bet on him would yield $210 in winnings if he were to upset O'Malley. On the other hand, O'Malley is favored at minus 250 suggesting that a $250 bet would be needed to win $100 if he retains his title. Following his successful comeback, Aldo has climbed back into the upper ranks of the MMA Fighting's global bantamweight rankings, debuting at number 6 in the latest update. However, despite this resurgence, oddsmakers still view him as an underdog against O'Malley. O'Malley, on the other hand, is expected to defend his title against top contender Marab next, with Marab also being favored in their potential matchup. O'Malley's status as an underdog is reflected in his odds against Marab, as well as in a hypothetical champion-versus-champion bout against featherweight champ Ilya Topuria. 
So, while Aldo's return has certainly reinvigorated his position in the bantamweight division, the odds suggest that he faces an uphill battle if he hopes to capture the title from O'Malley.